so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will be solving problem d that is different arrays from add you round 141 so let's move on to the problem so this problem was not that difficult if you guys are comfortable with dp so let's move on to the solution and see how we can solve this but before we move on to the solution, I want to tell you guys about Newton School's coding contest. As you guys know, Newton School does this coding contest every month. And this month, the name of the contest is Code Rush X. And the prizes are better than ever before. So you can win prizes up to rupees 10 lakhs. And along with this, you can win placement opportunities in top product companies. So like if you guys want to play this for fun or you guys want to play this for placements, that is totally up to you. Uh, the contest will be on 28th of January. Uh, it will start around 9 p.m. and the contest will be three hours long. So there will be ample amount of time for you guys to brainstorm and solve good quality problems. So if you guys want to benchmark yourself or just win some placements, this is a very good opportunity. I will leave a link to this contest in the comments and in the description so you guys can go and sign up from there and show or you can flex how good you are at problem solving. So now let's move on to the solution. So in the problem, we have been given an array A of size n, where n can be up to 300. So something like a1, a2, a3, so on up to a n minus 1 and a n, right? And we have two types of operations, right? In the first type of operation, we will choose some index ai, subtract ai from ai minus 1, right? And we will add ai to ai plus 1. So this is the first type of operation. Basically, we choose some middle element, right? And we subtract this from the left element and we add this to the right element. Similarly, we have the type two operation. This is type one and we have type two operation. In this, we, we will take AI and subtract AI from AI plus one and add AI to AI minus one, right? So something like this. So in this, we'll take some element AI and add it to the left element and subtract it to the left element right we have a plus one here so we start from element a2 we choose if we want to apply operation of type 1 or type 2 then we move on to a3 and so on we move on to an minus 1 right so in total we apply n minus 2 operations we start from a2 and go up to an minus 1 and in the end, you have to answer what are the possible like different resulting arrays that you can get if you can choose every operation independently, right? So you have to answer total different number of resulting arrays, right? That is the problem. If you are able to choose every operation independently going from A2 up to N minus 1, what are the total number of different arrays that you can form? right so that is the problem now how can we solve this so let's move on to the solution so the only observation that you need to solve this problem is that uh, your operations are not affecting that many elements right so if we have something like ai ai plus one and ai minus one if you apply operation on ai it will like do something to ai plus one and it will do something to ai minus one but like if you want to find the value of a plus one, we don't need to look at the elements that are before AI, right? So for all the elements from AI up to AI minus one, we can ignore these. These will not contribute to my value of AI plus one. I can just use my AI value to find the value of AI plus one. So this sorts of give you a hint that like you only need to keep track of one state. So we can use DP for that, right? And also my constraints are up to 300. So that was also a, like a slight hint that you can go in the direction of DP, right? So we know that we only need to keep track of one state. That is if you like keep track of AI, we can somehow use that to build my state AI plus one, right? So let's see how we can do this. So let's define our DP state as DP of IJ. That is like the number of arrays number of arrays that end at index i such that your value of ai becomes j so let's assume you have applied operations on from index 2 up to all the indexes up to i minus 1 so after you apply operations from index 2 up to i minus 1 your dp of ij 
will give you the number of arrays that are ending at index i where your value of ai becomes j right so after applying operation on ai minus one or index i minus one your value of ai has become j and the number of such arrays that end at, end at index i are dp of i j right so now we have to use this to uh, like to see the operation at index i and build your next state so let's see uh, so let's see how we can do this so let me draw this out so we have a1 a2 a3 so on up to ai minus one ai ai plus one right so we have applied operations on a2 a3 so on up to ai minus one right so like after applying these operations now your value of ai has become some like random value j right not random but some like value j so we know the value of dpij that is we know the number of arrays that are ending at this index and your value of like ai has now become j right so now we know the value of dpij so let's see how this will be useful when we apply operation on index i right because we have applied operations on index 2 up to i minus 1 so now we have to apply operation on index i so you have let me drag up so we have ai we have ai minus 1 and we have ai plus 1 now we know that my ai has become some value j we don't care about what my ai minus 1 is right so far my ai plus 1 is still ai plus 1 right because we have all, we have only applied operations up to i minus 1 and they will not affect the value of ai plus 1 right so my ai minus 1 like can be some random value we don't care about that i know my value of ai is j and i know my value of ai plus 1 is still ai plus 1 so after i apply operation of type 1 right my j will get added to the right element right so my ai plus 1 becomes ai plus 1 plus j so now you can use this to like find the state dp of i plus 1 ai plus 1 plus j right because you know the value of dp ij you know how many arrays are ending at index i with value j so now like you when you apply operation of type 1 that many arrays will convert to dp i plus 1 ai plus 1 plus j right so you can say that if you apply operation of type 1 your dp of i plus 1 ai plus 1 plus j will increase by plus equal to dp of i j right that is when you apply operation of type 1 on index i with value j it will convert to index ai plus 1 and value ai plus 1 plus j i hope that makes sense mm -hmm. similarly if you apply operation of type 2 this will this will become dp of i plus 1 ai plus 1 minus j plus equal to dp of i j right so that will be the two transitions that you can make also keep like keep in mind that here your value of j is non-zero right but if your value of j is zero if your value of j is equal to zero then like uh, like if you apply option of type 1 or type 2 they will be both similar right so like so like if your value of j is equal to zero you should ignore one of the transitions right so for example uh, let's say I have three zero four, right? In this case, if I ap apply operation of type one, my ending array is three zero four, right? Even if you apply operation of type one, or even if you apply operation of type two, right? The ending array is three zero four. So, like, keep in mind the following case. So, like, if your j is equal to zero, you should you have to ignore one of the, one of the transitions, right? So, like, keep in mind to do that as well. So, like, that is the entire answer. And in the end, your final answer will be just answer is equal to dp of n and summation over all possible j values, right? That will be your final answer. So also, if you see here, we are uh, we are only using dp of i and dp of i plus one. So like if you want to optimize memory, we can ignore this dp of i and dp of i plus one. And you can define this as you can say old dp and let's say call this new dp right this will also help you to optimize the memory so that will be the entire solution and uh, like if you want to see the constraints like how we implement this so we will have dp of size nj like if you optimize the memory you can also ignore this n right so we will form a dp of size j now but again the constraints on j so like if you array something like 0 300 300 300 so on like if you add to this 
this 300 will become 600 if you again add to this this will become 900 and so on so on so on right so your max value can go up to minus 90,000 and you can also get some negative values right so you also have to keep care of negative values this can also get i think up to minus minus 600 i guess or minus 900 i guess right something like that so like uh, these are the extreme values of j that you can get so it can go up to minus 900 up to i think positive 9000 so you also have to keep track of like these negative values so to keep track of negative values we can like do a offset let's say you add value of 10 to the power 5 right to make the negative values positive and like keep track of negative values right so you can define your j up to uh, uh, 2 into 10 to the power 5 right this will be a value of j so you can define a dp of size you can define two dps old dp and new dp right you can define two dps old dp this will be of size 2 into 10 to the power 5 as well so or you can say 2e5 you can define a new dp as well this will also be of size 2e the power 5 right then we'll initialize, initialize our old dp so i have initially a1 a2 a3 so on up to a n so initially i will apply operation on a2 and initially value of a2 is equal to 1 right so you can say that your old dp you can apply a offset to like keep track of negative values so all old dp offset plus your value of a2 your value of a2 is a2 is equal to 1 right so there is only one array ending at a2 which has a value of a2 then we can use this to build our new dp so let's say you iterate from index you go from index i2 up to index n minus 1 right that is you apply n minus 2 operations so initially uh, your offset uh, plus a2 is equal to 1 so we can use this to build our entire dp uh, up from this so then your value of j for value of j goes from 0 up to 2 e the power 5 right and in this j value you do have your offset so your real value will be equal to j minus offset then we can use this to build our new dp so like if you apply operation of type 1 on this real value so your new dp then your ai plus 1 plus real value plus equal to your old dp of j right your old dp of j and like when you are building your new dp you also have to like add the offset so you also add the extra offset and if you apply operation of type 2 in that case your new dp it will become ai plus 1 minus real value and plus the offset plus equal to old dp of j right and like also before you add this also keep in mind that you have to check if your real value is equal to 0 or not right because otherwise you will double count your answer and in the end your answer is just summation over all old dp states right all old dp states where your j goes from 0 up to 2 to the power 5 that will be your final answer and if you want to see the code for this uh, here is the code there is it yeah here is the code so you will take input uh, your array then you will define a dp old dp of size max n and here my max n is up to 2 e d power 5 uh, then uh, I will define my like old dp this is offset and my v of 1 plus 1 right so my array 0 index so this is my second element a2 so offset plus a2 is equal to 1 then I will define like then I will start iterating for all the operations every operation I will define a new dp then I will build out this new dp this is offset plus ai plus 1 minus real value right and plus real value I will use this to build my dp and like after every operation i will swap my old dp and new dp right because like after every operation your like uh, your i becomes i plus one right so like you have to do that 
So in the end, your answer is just summation over all uh, DP states of the old DP for like uh, J goes from zero up to max n. So you can uh, uh, add them all to your answer and you can find the mod of it, right? Then just print out the answer. So that will be the entire solution. And if you guys have any doubts, feel free to ask in the comments or the Discord server. I'll be more than happy to answer your doubts there and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.